And so yeah, our last talk, but not last, but certainly not least, we have Colonel Live Dump with Lucas. Uh, please go ahead and uh, take it away. So hello everyone. My name is Lukas Zuska. I work for SUSE as a kernel live pitching developer, and I would like to show you my small project, kernel live dump, and hopefully get some feedback on it or tips how to solve some of my problems I currently have. So what it should actually do. Well, LiveDAM should uh, provide some way how to create a consistent image of the kernel memory without stopping or restarting the machine. Uh, this would be useful, for example, for cases where we are trying to debug some complex issue, which is running only on some machines, which are on the production, and also running some high level services. So the creating some KDAMP and restarting machine is not the option. Uh, this feature was already introduced in 2012 by uh, Yoshida Masanori as a proof of concept of this feature that it's also working. And I used it as my baseline and rewrite it to version 6.2 and started working on it. So I'm, this is also a way I would like to thank for his work on it. Now let's take, take a look uh, on some summary of the features and compare them with the current state. Restart is, of course, currently not required, so that's one good point. Uh, we are using the copy on write technique. The consistent state is questionable because there's still one uh, problem with VMAP areas, so this is just going to be discussed later. Currently, we sub I support only x86 architecture, but I would like to extend the support uh, in the future. Uh, the lifetime supports multiple possible targets, but currently there is only one as an example. And the output is actually supported by most of the crash uh, debugging uh, tools because uh, the output is the same as the VM core format. The, the implementation is separated into three parts where only one is architecture specific. It's the write, write protect uh, part which makes sure that the memory is uh, all read only and unlocks it after it's making sure that the handler which is, uh, which is provided during the initializ initialization phase uh, saves the memory before uh, opening it per each page frame, which is our main unit in this case. Then we have Lightdown Core, uh, which is just a wrap up of everything, holding it together, uh, handling uh, sysfs attributes work, and also it makes sure that we are using the correct live jump uh, handler for actually specified output path. Then there is the one of the implementation memdump, which just simply use the block IO uh, requests to uh, save those data on the ROM block device. To understand it better, we take a look uh, cl more closely to the write protect. How does it work? Uh, there's four phases, and to keep a track about this current state, it needs uh, two bitmaps and three flags inside the P uh, page tables PT record. The PT I'm saying because currently, for simplification, I support only four kilobyte pages, and it's just for for now. It will be in the future extended. Uh, the two of the bits are obvious, which I require. It's the present and read write. And then I am using the software one bit, which I'm using as a backup of the previous state before the write topic started. Uh, this way, I have handled those cases when I have uh, more than one virtual addresses accessing the like pointing at the same uh, physical address. So, uh, and both of, all of them could have different protection. So this way I will definitely restore the previous state correctly. Then uh, one of the bitmaps is uh, informing if this page frame, uh, if the write protect is interested in this page frame. And then the second bitmap is a subset of the first one indicating if the page frame was already saved. Uh, now take a look at the phases. The initial phases uh, just, phase just uh, saved the pro provided uh, Handler, uh, which then calls uh, on each uh, on each page frame. Uh, then it uh, 
split the, all the pages to four kilobyte ones, and in the end, it just initialized the bitmaps. Then more uh, interesting one uh, is the start phase, which start the stop machine state, in which it uh, first check the E820 uh, module, which just says us which memory is reserved and which is usable by the system. Uh, after that, we save all the sensitive, page, uh, sensitive pages, which contains, for example, all, all the page table structure, which can't just page fault during uh, accessing them uh, or changing them. Uh, then we enable our own page fault handler, which we require. And in the end, uh, the rest of the addresses are just traversed using page fault and set to read only. After exiting the stop machine state, we get a lot of page faults in, the, in our uh, custom uh, page fault handler. Uh, we solve them by first checking the error code, if it was a protection error, also write operation, and from the kernel. If it wasn't, we just let the original page fault handler to handle this page fault because it's not something which we should care about. Then there is uh, a mistake in my slide because I try to optimize the uh, conversion from the virtual address to the physical address by just in the in in case of having like direct map uh, uh, address to just do the subtraction of the page offset and then just shifting by the page shift but first I unfortunately need to call the lookup address anyway to get the PTE record to check if the previous value of the read write was actually writable because if I, it wasn't, this is just classical general, uh, classical uh, protection error, which I wasn't like made for right protective process, but the original page fault handler. Uh, then when I have the page, page frame number, I check if the right protect is even interested in this page, page frame. If it is, I check if it was saved already. If it wasn't, I call the handler, which was provided. And then in both cases, I unprotect this uh, virtual address. Uh, now uh, I have handled all those uh, accesses, like uh, tries to write into my memory, but then I have still read all those kind of parts of memory which were originally read only or were writable, but they are not that often like changed. So I need some uh, uh, sweeper, as I call it, which just travels to the all memory, checks if it was already saved, and it wasn't save it and unprotect it. Then the last one, last phase is just an uninit. We just restore the memory and uh, set the software bit again to the zero so it can be used by other uh, modules or solutions. Now, when we understand how the saving is being done, let's take a look at the problems I'm starting to have. One of the biggest is the queue size problem, where uh, Memdams handler is currently saving uh, every page page uh, on the queue where we have more than one queue, we have four queues. Uh, two of them are like the list of free pre-allocated pages to be used to save, to, to back up those uh, uh, faulted page, pages. And then the sec uh, second two are like those which should be currently processed because they are filled some, with some useful data. Then we have uh, Kthread, which is just processing those queues and trying to save them on the block device. The reason why we have two of them is because we are separating those and uh, those uh, calls from the page fault and those from the sweepers because they have different priorities because we can't just sleep longer on those page faults because we are normal, just traversing the memory and wait, let the system wait just because of that. Um, now the problem is what should be the size of the page fault queue. Because during the stop machine state, we are first filling the queue with data of those sensitive pages. And then after exiting, there are also some uh, data structures used by the bio itself, which are currently locked. So they are also regenerating some page faults which are filling this queue. And if the queue wasn't big enough, we will just simply have a infinite loop, which will just create the system at we don't want it. Uh, my idea, first idea would be, uh, is to create some calibration phase, which would uh, normally write protect the memory, 
right to the some variable which where we are you uh, sure that is also write protected and then using tracing uh, wait for the completion of the write on the block that, for example in this case block device where in in this case would be this trace point block request complete uh, then I would check what was the maximum uh, maximum count of the used uh, preserved pages and then I would just uh, multiply it with some constant so we are sure there is some still some reserve for the other page fault which would be from other threads. Uh, the other option would be also to unlock uh, as many page frames uh, which are being definitely used by the write operation because in this case we shouldn't rely on correctness of some uh, technology which, which we are using to save this slide dump so we should in case of we will we will uh, for example debug the bio which we shouldn't use the bio to save the dump because we can't be sure it, it's already correct so we don't care if we, we would lose those uh, page frames uh, also another way how to somehow optimize it would be to have more variants of the page fault handling uh, because not every time we need like 100% consistent state we could have uh, variants which would be 100 consistent variant but it would have could have some possible performance impact where we first could uh, try to allocate more and more pages for the page page fault queue until there will, wouldn't be any memory and then have the activating inside the page fault handler which is what we don't definitely want or we could have a possibly inconsistent uh, version which would just uh, throw away the data in case of the queue is just full and somehow uh, flag it inside the output but it would require some modification of those uh, fresh dump debugging tools uh, also what i was thinking about could be a version where we would have 100 percent consistent variant with minimal performance but it could like just crash and don't complete which would be in the case that the queue is again full now something about uh, now uh, the work which is still in front of me uh the vmap area uh the only problem currently i have is the synchronization problem because uh, all the other memory is using uh, either vmap uh, is it mutex or spinlock i'm not sure now no it's a uh, it's a semaphore and then there is a spinlock for the page ta page table struct but the vmap if I understand correctly, you can correct me uh, if I'm wrong. Uh, there are two spin locks where one is for the free area and one is for the use area. And to be, to be able, yeah, you can correct me. Oh, no, I wasn't going to correct you on that. I was just going to mention that uh, Dragon and I believe Crash will both work just fine without you uh, preserving the VMAP area, as long as the corresponding physical addresses are, uh, as, as long as the memory still gets preserved in the direct mapped area. And we'll just walk the page tables ourselves to to resolve the virtual addresses from the VMAP area. So, is the problem that uh, that your page fault handler can't figure out which physical address the VMAP corresponds to, or is it just that you want to have the virtual address to physical address mapping in there? Well, so maybe we can discuss it later after the other presentation. Yeah, uh, presentation. If you can avoid having to deal with that at all, it'd be yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, so the options would be to either export those spin locks, which I know it's not that much welcome, but uh, the other idea would be to have something similar, which is to the page walk, where we would have a VMAP walk, which would just require uh, the handler to be provided. And then first it would correctly log those spin locks, which are required for the accesses of those memories you want to access. And then it will call the handler you want to call other thing is that i am currently using the stop machine state but stop machine state is not that instant thing you because it's just a scheduling high priority thread so we still are waiting for the scheduler to schedule it 
and the interrupt will be much better thing because we want that exact instant when we press the enter that we want the create uh, the live down to be created. Then I would also like to do some analysis of the impact of splitting those pages because I know there should be some TLB overhead, but I don't know how big it, it would be. And then either to have some huge page support where I would have uh, for each size of the page a different queue, but then, then there will be other optimization problems, how to reuse those bigger queues and so on. Or to have a page table restoration where I would first create the backup and then track all the modification being done during the run and then just somehow restore them back with, with the already created backup. And also, of course, I would like to create other target storage support, for example, to create a file instantly or to just send it somewhere to, through the network. So thank you for your time. Uh, any question, ideas, tips? I will be happy for anything. Yeah, I have a couple. <laughs> Sorry, I'm always asking questions here. But um, yeah, one thought I wanted to ask do you do any dump filtering uh, like make dump file would because that could reduce a lot of your workload and performance issues right currently i'm not but this is a good idea because sometimes yeah. we have only some quick caches or data yeah. which we don't know don't Nin need, so yeah 95 percent of the time you don't care about user space data page cache yeah. data yeah. private cache stuff like that so if you can get rid of that then your page fault handlers can let user space move on in a lot of cases. That will also help with the problem with the queue size because yeah. that will be yes. much directly. That there. too. And, and on your queue size problem, I had another thought. One thing that the kernel does with the memory allocators is that it has it has kind of a reserve emergency uh, amount that it can it can use for certain cases, um, like min-free min k-bytes, I believe, was might be part of it. But essentially, have you considered having a flag you can set where I'm already in a page page fault handler. And then if you get into a recursive page fault handler because of say the block device, you know, your the block device is trying to write and you get another page fault, you can check in that uh, check that flag. And if it's set, then you can say, oh wow, I need to use some of my emergency reserve queue space here and go ahead and use that. And then if you're not in that recursive situation, then you can uh, you wouldn't you would never use that queue size or that queue region. Well, again, I didn't think about it, and it's really a great idea. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, awesome. <laughs> Other questions, <laughs> comments. One thing I was just curious about was the the software bit. Do you know what else uses that that you might conflict with? Uh, I checked it in the upstream, but there was no use of it currently. But there might be some external modules which are using it. So, okay. Currently, it's free. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, it looks like we'll have a few minutes to, to give back to everybody, but uh, we're all probably going to be up here at the front. So thank you again, or thank you for the first time and again <laughs> for, your, uh, for your talk. Yeah. And thanks to all our, our presenters here. I really appreciate it. This is a really successful first con micro conference for us. Thanks. Cool idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.